Hey out there, Eric Holland here from David Walters Yachts. We're at Harbor Town Marina, the location of our Fort Lauderdale office. It's mid-January, and it's in the uh, low 70s today. It's a beautiful day without a cloud in the sky. And we're going to take a look at this really special 2011 Hylus 56. This is in Danzas, and she's a very well-equipped 56. As you can see, she's got a lot of nice features about her. Uh, one of the things you'll notice right away is that uh, she has a white hull with red stripes. Really good look with an aluminum tow rail. And of course, she also has the teak decks. So a really complimentary look there. It's a really nice setup. She also has the GMT carbon fiber mast and a powered furling boom with a 2021 full bed mainsail. The Jenna was a 2016. So this boat here has been nicely upgraded to really good shape. And we're going to go take a look through here. Quick tour of the outside. We'll see if there's a rock anchor on the bow there. We've got two anchor rollers. This is an integrated anchor roller setup. It's stainless steel built into the bow plate there. We've got strike guards on the hull of the anchor. There's also an LED bow light. We've got a two to one here for a inner force day. So we have a removable inner force day with a two to one halyard. See the deck lockers there. The stainless steel hatches and port lights by Manship, all looking to be really nice. You see the canvas here, the cockpit, the Dodger, the Bimini, is all in new condition. Of course, on a trans you can see the dinghy, outboard motor. You can see this boat was built to a very high specification with a lot of options. She's got the rod rigging. You know, this is a really nice setup. So let's go aboard and take a look around. Got a Furlex 400 Ferrari here with a 2016 Genoa on it. Maxwell 2200 windlass. And we see we have these really cool little seats here built into the pole, but now that was an option from the shipyard. You don't see that on a lot of Hylases, but it's nice to have up here if you want to come forward and have a seat and uh, explore the area from the bow of the boat. You know, looking down here at the deck, you can see the teak's in a really nice shape, well-maintained, definitely very good condition. You know, looking here at the anchor lock, you see you have a split anchor well right there. You see the windless motor there, windless motor's in great shape. Got looks like a full chain road on the port side and some uh, anchor lines, uh, snubbers, some warm ball snubbers there on starboard. And then we have this uh, aft compartment behind this partition, so we have some hoses and fenders and that kind of thing. There's also going to be a couple of wash downs in here, so you just swivel over here, and then we can see that there's a wash down over there. And then if we come back around on this side, there's another wash down right over there. So we have both fresh and salt water wash downs in the anchor locker. Moving to the next hatch aft here, this is the access to the sail locker. And we can see here that uh, you know, it looks like we've got uh, a lot of things stored here. Looks like we've got some sails, some running rigging. Uh, this is a very deep locker. Uh, it's about uh, five and a half feet deep, so you can get a lot of stuff in here. And there's molded in steps here on the front and the back side. You can't see the back one, but um, they're definitely there. And so you can easily get down uh, to the bottom of this locker. You can see here, this is the stay sail chain plate. So it looks like she's in really good shape. And then of course the uh, top side of the chain plate right there. We have two sets of cleats here up on the bow. I have a signature, very tall lifeline stanchions by Hylas. And the wire here all looks to be in great condition. It's it's actually, it looks like it's oversized a little bit for the boat, which is great. It's great to have some thicker gauge wire for your lifelines, better to hold on to. Uh, we can see here the uh, teak deck extends on top of the cabin house here up to the, uh, up to the uh, Dodger, essentially. We have these great stainless steel grab rails on the sides here. Now uh, those could have been aluminum, they could have been teak, they opted for stainless, so it's nice and easy to hold on to. You could also strap things down on deck up here if you wanted to. And then we have the raid vents right there with guards, with the uh, hire keepers 
on top of them. Another great feature, you can obviously take these off and just leave the boxes at the bottom if you had a dinghy or something you wanted to lay up here. Uh, looking at the mast, we've got a carbon fiber spinner pole, whisker pole right here. Radar, hailer horn, deck light, we have LED spiral lights here. Mast looks to be in great shape. This is carbon fiber. This is a GMT mast. A lot of the running rigging has been updated. There are some high tech lines here. You can see the uh, running backstays. They're fairly fresh, looks like. They're Dyneema. Nice keepers here, really well done. Got a nice canvas cover here to protect, to protect the mainsail. Like I said, that's a 2021 uh, Doyle mainsail. It's a Hydronet, so this is a, a very good quality. Uh, maintains the shape well. Uh, it's a great sail to have. And this is an electric furling unit. And the motor in here was replaced uh, a few years back. So she's also to go for a significant amount of more time. Uh, hydraulic vang here. Control from the cockpit. And we also have these Antel stainless steel winches here for all your forward halyards, like uh, your spinnaker halyard, your jib and your staysail halyard. Coming down the side of the deck, we see you have a rod rigging. That's set of wire. Rod's great to have. Rod lasts a very long time. All that looks to be in really nice shape. And now there's no, there's no raising of the teak around the chain plates like you see on um, you know, a lot of other used boats out there, which would indicate a lot of excess rubbing or um, use of harsh chemicals on the teak deck. Uh, the owners have taken very, very good care of this. Again, you can see there's no rays around the areas. You know, it's, it, the teak here is still extremely thick. You can even see right there how thick it is. Uh, this teak has many, many more years of life left in it. Uh, we can see the top of the cabin house here. We've got uh, a really great uh, Dodger and Bivney setup, and this is uh, in new condition right here. We have covers for everything, so it keeps all the plexi in really great shape. You have covers for the surrounds here, so there's a full enclosure with all the covers. Cover for the cockpit table, cover for the helm. You know, all this is just in really, really nice shape. We'll go back to the cockpit in a bit, keep walking around deck. Uh, another thing to note here is these aft pulpits were extended all the way up to the lifeline gates. Now that was an option from the shipyard from Queen Long and did a great job there. Really nice to lean against your strap gear too. Uh, we're coming up here to the propane locker. See we have two 20 pound bottles right here. That's proper. We'll keep it up propane for a whole season. So we have the main tree traveler there. There's also a little solar panel here to keep the batteries topped off. Nicely done, fits right over the hatch and clips in place. We have a magma grill. Sorry for all the noises in the background, guys. It is a working yard, so we've got some equipment that's moving around constantly here every day of the week. Uh, right here, uh, we've got the uh, uh, the Bezzoni davits, uh, these are retractable davits made in Italy, so when the dinghy is uh, not on the transom, you can retract these all the way into place, which is great if you're going to be pulling the boat out on the hard, you don't need to be charged for all the extra footage of having a set of davits back there. Uh, these are really nice setups. See here the dinghy, the walker bay. Yeah, and we have the teak step down right there. Now there's a trunk there as well that opens up for more storage. And then we have, you know, the last rets here. We have one on either side, very deep. You can see the steering tillers there, more storage. Mm -hmm. Crossing over to the other side here. Again, we have more storage right here. So plenty of room on deck for all your gear. And just like a forward, we have seats on a transom in the corners here that are molded in. It's nicely done. And they're pushed back actually a bit further than normal. Um, they extend further aft. Normally they're not as deep. Um, and this, because of this, you actually get more deck space back here. You can get these hatches open more and get more things in there. But these are extended further back than normal. Uh, I, I like that look a lot actually. It does work out. 
Yeah. View with a boom here in the back side of the rig. You see here the short power connection and then the port side of the deck. So now we're in the cockpit here. It's a really nice spot to hang out. Got a lot of shade. There's a lot of headroom in here as well. Nice tall bimini there. And some important features to point out. Uh, we have the helm here. So we have a stainless steel helm wheel with a leather wrap around it. The leather wrap's in great condition. Uh, we've got a Garmin 7212 chart plotter. Uh, this is a touchscreen plotter with a Rain Rain ST6002 autopilot. We have a stereo control here. The VHF radio bow thruster, uh, windless control with a windless counter, and we have the single lever engine controls. Uh, right here to my right, we've got the engine controls here, and we have two speed electric primary winches, and we also have a two speed halyard winch over there, and then you also have the electric main set controls over on that side. And right over here, we have the auxiliary control panel. Now this auxiliary control panel will control everything um, from the cockpit. You would need to like lights and blowers and bilge pumps and that sort of thing without having to go down below. Again, we have Teak in the cockpit here. Teak's in incredibly great shape. It's Frank, it's like new. Um, yeah, it's very thick. There's no signs of any issues there at all. You've got this really nice table here. It's kept covered up. As you can see, it's in really nice shape. I'm going to keep it covered up. That's a sneak peek. If you want to see for real, come look at the boat. Like I said, we've got our main cell controls over there. And we have one of the spinnaker halyards, uh, the main halyard right there. We also have another plotter right here. We have a watch station set up. That's Garmin 740. And of course, we have some cockpit speakers, for stereo, and 12 volt plugins. All in all, it's a really nice setup in here. And we're gonna go ahead and peek down below. All right, so here we are. We're in the saloon on Andanzas. We just popped down below. We're gonna take a tour around here. Uh, you know, every single Hylus uh, is different um, because there's a lot of customization done by the particular owner uh, and the yard is willing to do that customization to suit their particular tastes and what options are available and what they've learned in the past. So you're going to see a lot of things, especially about this boat, that are going to be different than other 56s out there. Now they built 28 Hylus 56s. This is hull number five. So you'll see um, that this boat is strikingly going to be different than the rest of them that are out there. And there's some really cool features I want to show you. Um, one of the first things is this really tasteful lattice work here with the glass behind. And I'll let you see what's in the cabinet. Here we have a bunch of games and stuff. Now looking very classical. It's a raised panel designing here. You know, I love the mill work here around the edge. Now, normally these are kind of just flat with rounded edges. This actually has some more millwork involved. It looks really nice. And it's uh, more of a semi-gloss than a high gloss. Sorry for the glare there. It's bright sun. Has some blue LED rope lighting in there. And then on the surrounds here, we have this kind of like a, almost like a hair shelf kind of look with the white and the teak trim and the overhead and the surrounding and the windows. I like that a lot. Looks great. Uh, the forward bulkhead is... Uh, it's set up really well. It's unencumbered by like a large TV or anything like that. So there's a lot of nice real estate there. A lot of rich wood to look at. The dinette here is done in a kind of a, a suede here, like a, like a beige suede, which looks good. And we have this walnut table. And then the cabin sole is, um, is uh, bamboo. I'm sorry, bamboo with a teak inlay. Again, it's like semi-gloss. So it looks good. It wears well. You know, it, it doesn't dull out over time like the high gloss would so it looks really nice come back here to the nav station we had this set up uh it's kind of an office as well so there's a great high leather back chair that swings out it's very plush you see we have a monitor here so you can plug in a laptop or something like that there's actually the laptop connections in this pull out drawer right there again this is, was done really well Electrical panel, uh, Northern Lights generator panel, that's a six kilowatt Northern Lights. 
inverter control battery monitors, another plotter and a VHF radio, and of course your water maker control, autopilot remote, and uh, more tank monitors. Now spinning around here, we'll see the uh, top edge of the sink area, and we get this really nice wood countertop here, and then we have this really well done, it's uh, looks like it's a, probably a marble type of sink there, or quartz countertop, looks really nice. Now something that's going to take people back a little bit is, whoa, what's going on here? Well, the owners, um, when they built this boat, they designed it for long duration offshore cruising. I'm talking long duration, like going off and circumnavigating and being out of touch of land for some time. So they wanted some special features put into the boat. One of these was an extended galley. So you see the galley here has been extended all the way to the forward bulkhead. So we have this large countertop. We have a Force 10 three burner stove and oven. And then we have all this refrigeration here. So we have four pull out drawer refrigerators and an ice maker and a trash compactor. So we have more refrigeration here than normal, which is fantastic. There's more storage, very deep storage right here. You can see when you open this up, that this goes all the way back to the outside there. So you have lots of room. And then we continue further aft here you see you have more countertop space, and then there's a workshop. Now, you're not going to see a workshop normally up here. On a Hiles 56, you would sometimes see it in the port guest cabin forward. There would be a small workshop up there. Well, this is a, a real workshop, and you've got all the storage here for tools. You have this stainless steel bench right here. I'm kind of surprised there's not a vice bolted to it. You know, if you had to go offshore for an extended period of time, you need to carry all your spare parts. Well, you need room for all of them. So you have a ton of space here. There's a liquor cabinet. That's important too. Safety gear. Spare part storage. You have everything here. Really easy to access and get to. And turning around here. You come to dishwasher built in. And then right below it, we have access to mechanics the boat so opening this door here this will get us into the generator area the generators right there just up some more that's better so you can see we have generator fuel filter muffler uh, this is the linkage here for the mamba steering it's a direct linkage to the rudder system using, using universal joints and that is the electronic i'm sorry that's the electric autopilot motor that bolts right into it there so it's all in one system we can see the access to the shaft seal is right there and then we can see the motor up there we'll see that in a little bit more but all this looking really good lots of great access now we're going to take a look at the engine here we have the Twin rate core fuel filters right there. Uh, we had the VW. This is the uh, TDI 150 horsepower engine. It's a nice, efficient engine by Volkswagen. Again, lots of easy access. Port and starboard behind and front. You can lay on top of the engine to get to the back of it. And you know, lots of easy access to get the things. Lots of, lots of nice space in here. Uh, moving forward from the saloon. I'm going to go into the forward passageway. You can see the keel step mast right here. And you'll see up here, now this is uh, being used for storage right now. We have all these really nice cockpit cushions. They're all in brand new condition. There's still some wrapped in plastic. We have more canvas here. But this is the uh, port side guest cabin. And um, it's been opened up. This bulkhead here has been shortened. So there's a door actually that is here. Normally there's no door here. Normally this patch is just open and it comes to the door that's here. Now this door is normally where it should be, but with the door, another door being added here and the removal of this bulkhead, shortening it back, they were able to open this area up to be more useful. So you have a lot of storage, you have a bunk here and a bunk down there, and then this bunk is extendable down to here. So you could sleep two people here if you needed to, or a third person here. So you truly could, you know, typically in an uh, in a standard 56 or 54 layout, really be a one person who come from this area. You could sleep a couple in here. You could sleep three people in a pinch. So uh, you could definitely carry more people on the boat than you normally would guest-wise. Going into the guest cabin forward here, 
You see, you get the center line, island berth. It's a really nice setup. We have a lot of cabinetry, port and starboard, hanging lockers. It's a split berth. We have jack line heart points. I'm sorry, uh, leak off heart points on the overhead. And there's also access underneath. Right there, we have the water maker. Easy to get to. Just pull that open. Access here to the forward head. This is a manual forward head. It's always good to have a manual head on the boat. You never know. Electrics could fail and, well, you had to use it. You got to use it. Now we continue back aft here. We're going to go through the passageway again here. Now I'm six foot three. I'm walking straight through. And there's no wishes we have room on this boat. It's a really great setup. And here we go in the aft cabin. I mentioned that solar panel before. That's that wire right there. They just have it hooked up to the house batteries to keep things topped off when they're not on the boat. Uh, we have here on the port side, we've got a nice station here with some pull-out drawers, hanging locker, very large queen bed, center line berth. And then we have starboard here. We have a vanity. Flip up right here. Flip up mirror. Bookshelves behind. Really classic layout. Very nice setup. I have a bureau right here. There's a room if you wanted to to install a TV. And then we had the aft head. Again, this is a manual head. So it's practically indestructible. It's not electric. It's not going to fail. You just carry some spare seals and duck bill valves with you and you're good to go. And of course we have the aft shower right here. And on the outboard side, we have a washer dryer unit. Take one more look around. I like this setup you know, on the Hylos 56. You know, um, it's unique. It's something that uh, you don't see on a lot of these boats. Um, you know, these boats are built to go offshore. They're built to go exploring. Uh, this one in particular is all set up to spend extended time off the grid. You know, in the way it's been designed by the owners. Uh, I think she's definitely a very nice boat. So uh, give us a call. Well, hey folks, this has been a tour of Endanza. She's the 2011 Hylos 56. She's located at Harbor Town Marina in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. It's right where our office is. If you have any questions, feel free to give John Ossetek, the listing agent, a call, or myself. I'm Eric Holland, and my phone number is 410-279-3027, and my email is eric, E-R-I-K, at davidwaltersyachts.com.